The Gilded Age, a time of industrialism, technological advancements, and hidden corruption. Mark Twain characterized it as the external glitter of wealth that conceals a corrupt political core and reflects the growing gap between the very few rich and the very many poor. Other nations saw the United States as a beautiful, glittering place to live in, a place where you can never be less than affluent. But the people, especially the children, knew how crooked their world really was. Gilded. The demand of children for work in factories grew due to their obedience, petite frames, and nimble hands. They were an advantage for factory workers, as children would be cheated out of their wages. Children as young as three were wanted to work inside coal mines, and they were often found crawling inside narrow, dangerous places that adults would be too large to fit in. The operated machinery would often be running so incredibly fast that little fingers, hands, strands of hair, or even toes could get caught. In The Bitter Cry of Children by John Spargo, he states, The coal is hard and accidents to the hands, such as cut, broken, or crushed fingers, are common among the boys. Sometimes there's a worse accident. A terrified shriek is heard, and a boy is mangled and torn in the machinery or disappears in the chute, to be picked out later, smothered and dead. Dangerous chemicals and toxins were released in factories during the production of certain items, which imperiled children's lives and their health. Not only were they dangerous, but the factories were somber too. Robert Owens, a British social worker, asked a 12-year-old boy if he knew God. The boy stared vacantly at his questioner. God, he said. God, no, I don't. He must work at some other mine. People called these children child slaves. But in some cases, these adolescents had no choice. Families depended on each member to provide an income in this harsh world with bankruptcy and competition going around like a plague. But these children saw hope in 1904 when the National Child Labor Committee formed and a man named Louis Hine took a stand and showed the nation the conditions in which these children worked in. There is work that profits children and there is work that brings profit only to employers. The object of employing children is not to train them, but to get high profits from their work, said a man named Lewis Hine. Born in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Lewis Hine took a stand against child labor by documenting the cruelty through photography and eventually forced Congress and the states to take legislative action to end unfair child labor rules. According to Hine, it is the only way I can illustrate my thesis that the human spirit is the big thing after all. Previously a school teacher in New York City with a side hobby of photography, Lewis Hine quit his job to become a full-time photographer. He believed that photographs were the key to the past and with them, history could be told. Hine knew the power of one photo and turned his passion into a career Photography can light up darkness and expose ignorance, said Hein. In 1908, as a response to the growing presence of children in the workplace, the National Child Labor Committee was formed under the Theodore Roosevelt administration. Hein joined the National Child Labor Committee, or the NCLC, saying that he wanted to show things that had to be corrected. The National Child Labor Committee was a group that investigated the scope of the child labor epidemic and combated against its further growth. Louis Hine, along with the NCLC, took a stand by spreading awareness about child labor going on in the country 
and also by keeping updated information about the issue. Their goal was to keep children in school and out of the labor market until a certain age. Lewis Hine traveled across the country taking pictures of children working in coal mines, meatpacking houses, textile mills, and canneries. He went into factories smuggling his camera as factory owners did not want to be exposed of their horrific actions, tricking them in the process. His photographs included pictures of children working as shoe shiners, newspaper boys, and manual laborers. In my early days of my child labor activities, I was an investigator with a camera attachment. But the emphasis became reversed until the camera stole the whole show, says Hein. Hein also managed to trick the factory managers to take the pictures they did not want the media to see. These factory workers wanted to conceal their horrific acts from history. But Hein took a stand and made them inadvertently take the pictures they wanted to cover up. The children were often sent away when Hein tried to interview them, but he managed to interview some. When interviewing the children, Louis Hein had to scribble what the children would say on his palm with a pen inside his pocket. These photos were taken strategically as he only had one chance to get the photos perfect. Hein developed specific methods of composition to best convey the emotion of the children to the viewers. A common theme of Hein's photos is a connection of the subject to the viewer through eye contact. This created an intense feeling of sympathy towards the subject by the viewer. Along with George E. Dimmick, Lewis Hine published a book titled Priceless Children, American Photographs, 1890-1925, Child Labor and the Pictorialist Ideal. In this book, he published his photographs of children doing hard labor. Lewis Hine, along with the NCLC, also managed to pass the Keating Owens Act, which stated that all children have to be at least 14 years old in order to be employed, and at least 16 years old to work inside mines. However, this act was later deemed unconstitutional, and the Supreme Court shut it down in the Hammer v. Dagenhart case, as it violated the Commerce Clause. Although the Congress could not effectively pass the act, the states were persuaded to pass laws to ban child labor and establish maximum hours. It was only in the Great Depression, in 1938, under the Franklin Delano Roosevelt administration, that a much more successful piece of legislation, the Fair Labor Standards Act, was passed. The Fair Labor Standards Act, or the FLSA, was enacted to ensure that child work is safe and doesn't jeopardize their health. It aimed to right many of the wrongs in American industry. It also included the first minimum wage, maximum hours, prohibition of gender discrimination, and the abolition of child labor. This piece of legislation, along with all of the labor laws that have been passed after this, contributed to the realization of Hines goals. Shortly thereafter, in 1940, Louis Hine passed away with the knowledge that his work changed the world. In 1941, the Supreme Court decided to reverse the Keating Owens Act. He lived to see the Fair Labor Standards Act passed. No one had taken a greater stand on getting that law passed than Lewis Hine had. Lewis Hine and his exploration of child labor in the progressive era helped pioneer the social documentary genre. Hein proved that photography could be used to raise awareness towards the wrongs of society. He himself said, I'm sure I'm right in my choice of work. My child labor photos have already set the authorities to work to see if such things can be possible. Today, children must be at least 14 years of age to be employed, and work hours cannot interfere with school hours for employees 18 and under. Because of Lewis Hine, the education of future generations cannot be compromised for extra labor workers, and children cannot work in hazardous environments. The future of our nation is secured because of Hine.